I'm on the grind. Uh, for instance, last summer, I did a show in Lafayette at the venue. It was for, um, it was like a festival. Mm -hmm. It was uh, age appropriate, family friendly, you know what I'm saying? I don't really curse about music, you know, I may curse, you know, maybe in the interim between talking, but, you know, my mom be listening. You know what I'm saying? My daddy be listening. I mean, I grew up in the church, and therefore, I said the N-word, brother, now I'm really cursing my music. Yeah. But, um, but I, I, made, I, made, I, made, I made a special point to not even say the N-word because, you know, it was supposed to be kids, that they never showed up. But um, anyway, so I have, a, I have, like, it's like a freestyle I do. I always open up my souls, and I say, uh, Weapon B R, so I never been a coward. Call me Marcel P. Black Power, and then you know, kind of like you know, in the in the oral tradition, African people and church and the hip hop especially, um, you know, I be like when I say black, y'all say power, boom. So at the end of the night, the the guy who put me for the show said that you know, the the, the owner of the venue and the manager of the venue was upset because a couple of the white patrons walked out because I was chanting Black Power. Now. That's fine. Like I told you, we, like this is still the deep south. This is still southern Louisiana. So I understand racism is there. But this, what drove me about the situation is that the same white people was in there, where well, other rappers was talking about shooting and killing and selling dope and you know slapping women. You know, I, ain't, I ain't gonna curse because I, I respect you know what I'm saying, which I'm trying to accomplish here. But but they didn't have a problem with that. When it, when, when it, when I'm, and I understand. Look at me. I'm dark skinned, six three. You know what I'm saying? About to learn the power, big dude. So you know, but. When these other rappers are talking about putting pistols on their own people, you didn't have a problem with that. They were all for it. They was all for it. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah, that's in right. Woo -hoo. When I say black power, that's a problem. You know what I'm saying? And so, but you know, days like that, things I deal with, and even for my own people, I always say people, man, niggas don't want to hear that, that black talk. They don't want to hear that, you know what I'm saying? We do, we do this. Like, why? You have to ask yourself, why? Why do we only want to hear about black degradation? Why do we only want to dance when, when, when our sisters are? Of being uh, objectified, you know what I'm saying? Why? That's the question that we really have to ask ourselves as people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what I deal with, but I mean, like, my father's a gospel musician, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he's also, he worked in, he's a juvenile probation officer for 25 years. My mother retired a social worker. My father actually went to children's shelter now. So, like, the type of music and art I grew up seeing, combined with the community work I grew up seeing and what I do now. You know the things I've read, the things I went through. That's that's how you get more set people at, and it is it is a struggle doing what I do. But I feel like we don't need another Waka Flocka. We don't need another Two Chains. We don't need another Drake, Trey songs. Like what we are missing is balance. And my goal as an artist is to balance that out. So even though it's a struggle, I got to keep up the fight. I have to ask since you mentioned balance. When is your birthday? Huh? When is your birthday? So time 11, 1983. Oh okay. I was trying to see. You mentioned balance. You know I'm a Libra. I'm okay. all for the balance. Okay. So I'm like, okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> okay, so now you talk about some of the things. Well, I know you said the majority of it is a struggle, but what is one thing that you would say has came to you easily as a musician? Performing. <laughs> Performing. It's just, I mean, like I said, grew up in the church. Father, like, like it's funny because, like, I travel a lot. Like I told you, within the last two months, Houston, Dallas, Jackson, New, uh, New Orleans, Gulfport, you know what I'm saying, about to go to Colorado. Like, I grew up on the road with my father being a gospel being a gospel singer. Watching him, you know what I'm saying, he might do, you know, church programs, community seminars, weddings. We had a Jewish people, so he didn't this But, you know what I'm saying, but watching him perform and, you know, growing up in the church, you know, I was in a band in high school. So, um, you know, I did speech and debate when I was in high school. Um, so just get up in front of people and talk. I, like, I do, I do like, um... The spoken word? No, not spoken word. I, I don't want to do spoken word as much as I used to, but I do um, public speaking as well. Like, this year, you know, so I've been blessed to perform for, uh, you know, different uh, summer programs, and I've been blessed to be speakers at panelists at Jackson State, and I did a lecture performance at LSU um, last month or what have you. But um, just, um, you know, get up in front of people, you know what I'm saying? It's funny because I used to have a bad stuttering problem, and my father did too. But like, get up in front of people and talking or whatever, and not being afraid, it's been something I've been doing forever. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, don't get me wrong, I get butterflies before I get on every single stage. But like, once I say that first word, it's all over. And like, I have no problem. Because I understand that what I'm saying is bigger than hip hop, it's bigger than me, and it's bigger than, like, what I'm trying to accomplish is the most important thing. So, when we have a crowd full of 10 people or 10,000 people, I'm going to leave it all on the stage because I never know when the Lord will come back and I ain't got a chance to rap again. But I really believe in what I say. And so, that's one thing I do well. Don't get me wrong, I practice often. I try to practice 
if I have a show, you know what I'm saying, coming up in a week, I try to practice twice. Even if I don't have a show, I try to run over myself at least once a week. Come I'm a big dude, you know what I'm saying, I'm a real dude, you know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, I, I, got, I got to stay ready at all times, but that's one thing that always comes easy for me. Like, for instance, like, what I did last night was not an underground hip-hop show. Like, nobody from the underground hip-hop scene came out. I was in front of a crowd who wanted to hear Boosie and bounce music all night. But I was able to get up there and do my thing. I just sell my soul. I was who I was. I still had the same message, and I was able to rock it or whatever. So performing is something that I, you know, I think I do very well, and, and I understand that at a moment's notice, somebody might say spit something, or at a moment's notice, somebody might be like, yo, I need you to come do this, that, and the third. So I always stay ready, and that's, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the gifts that I have. But I, um, one of my biggest memories of you, I think, is like uh, when I saw you perform last summer at the... Uh, at the hip hop festival, remember? Oh, yeah, hot chin. Yeah, and remember, like, uh, the, the white guys all came and yeah, got on stage. Yeah, because they was coming from the wedding. Yeah, and it was like the groom and the groomsmen, and I just, it was, that it was, was like it was, the niggas thing. Whole, to it was me. the whole, you know what I'm saying? The girl was part. It was yeah, like and you just y'all, y'all y'all kept had, right at it. Y'all had black tuxedos on. It was crazy. Right, yeah, y'all would have been in black. Right, 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 right. And I'm That's like, cool. you never, you never missed the stride or anything. You right. kept right on going. Somebody, so. I think PK1 has footage of that. I need to get that. I, um... Somebody, because that was dope. I I don't know. I had like a picture. I don't know if I actually had the footage. I, I might picture. have had some PK1, uh, footage. Hopefully, he still have it on his phone. Because he showed it to me, and it was dope. Like, it, it, it was dope. But, uh, yeah, that was a good time, man. Um, they doing B.R. Hops in January this year. They're not going to do it this summer. Oh, really? They're going to do it in January. I can't wait for that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Rocks and the people at uh, Forward Arts and the people at the Shaw Center. Yeah, well, we had a good time out there. Indeed. So, let me ask you this, then. On a, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, like, how important is success, you know, as an artist for you? As an artist? I, I look at it in two different ways. Um, as an artist, no, no matter what type of music you make, be it underground, conscious hip hop, or be it ratchet club music, as an artist, you just want to be heard. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's, like, it, that's more, I mean, that's more tied into your emotions. So therefore, like, I want to be heard, I want people to understand what I'm saying, and I want people to feel it. So, that, I mean, everybody wants success in that capacity. As a businessman, that's very important. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I have a, I have a wife with two babies under two years old. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm all about my paper as it pertains to that. Now, I would never sell my soul to do anything that I couldn't go to sleep with at night or what have you. But it's very, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, to be to be truthfully honest with you, I, I got laid off in April. You know what I'm saying? This whole summer, I've been, I've been paying bills doing music. So I am all about <laughs> getting this paper. Oh, yes, yeah. and, then, and then just just, just in the spirit of, oh, I'm about, oh, by the way, I'm about to start working soon when I get back from Colorado. So don't think I'm just some bum rapper out here, you know what I'm saying? I'm taking care of my family. But um, um, I mean, in, in the spirit of, you know, a, a lot of my music deals with, you know, quote unquote, I guess what you would consider black nationalism. So in the spirit of black nationalism, in the spirit of uh, uh, Booker T. Washington and, um, uh, uh, Marcus Garvey, whatever, like as far as like circulating the black dollar and actually black businesses, you know what I'm saying, take control of their destiny. So I'm very serious about my business and their capacity. Like, I was blessed to get my first publishing check, you know what I'm saying, last month, you know what I'm saying, for my music. And I was like, wow, like, this is money that a lot of people are missing out on. You understand what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. So therefore, I believe in working for my money, but also making my money work for me. And there's a lot of different things that if you, if you, put, if you put the time into, you know what I'm saying? You can actually see that financial success at the end of the day. Cause that's how I've been staying afloat this whole summer. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's very important success. Now, do I care about being in the spotlights? No. I have a song too. I'm gonna send it to you as well. It was on my the project I put out in November called Fortune and Fame. And it's talking about like you know, like you know, what I'm saying I got bills. You know what I'm saying I want I want to put my kids in the, in the best things possible. I want to, um, you know, what I'm saying. If I can have any car in the world, I don't want no Bentley or no whatever. I just want a 96 Impala. You do what I'm saying. I'm a simple person. But, you know, so I got bills and my wife wants a big house. So, therefore, you know, I take the fortune. But the fame and having to be recognized as this, that, and the third, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if if if, if me being a figurehead for, like, you know what I'm saying, black empowerment, and that's what I'm called to do, I'll do that or whatever. But in the meantime, I'm just going to work, provide for my family, and do the best music possible or whatever. And yes, I do want to be successful. I'm so on a scale of 1 to 10, it's a 20. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, the three lectures are coming up, and I've been trying to, like, get every uh, artist that I interview to at least speak on, you know, how important this election is for them <laughs> as well as for us, you know, for, as, as well as, you know, as a country. So, Ooh, yeah. fancy, fancy, fancy. Have you 
You never heard my song called Black President, right? No. Oh, Lord. You better give me trouble. So, um, registered Democrat, voted for Barack. Um, I'm going to say that first. Um, last October, um, I released a song called Black President. And um, I wrote the song, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I work in the community. I see conditions or whatever. And, um, you know, I've been kind of studying the quote unquote, uh, like, a lot of the Green Party politicians. Uh, you know, it's only familiar that her sister, Cynthia McKinney, Cynthia McKinney and her sister Rosa Clemente, they was the presidential nominees for the Green Party. The first time you ever had, you know what I'm saying, a, uh, you know, saying a party uh, where the nominees were both women, and then one was black and one was uh, Hispanic or what have you. But, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really into those kind of radical politics as opposed to the two-party politics or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, 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 it's a lot of things that are going on in our communities that neither Democrats nor Republicans pay attention to. You know what I'm saying? Like, on, on the black president record, I say, uh, uh, Democrats treat us like a booty call. Republicans don't care about us all. They care about us at all. So it's up to the people to go to war with the evils instead of stuck in the same position waiting on politicians. So I feel like we need to be our own politicians. Like, we can't wait. Like, I love Barack. If Barack would say we'd probably shoot ball and, uh, you know what I'm saying, go drink a ball or something. But I have to ask myself and I ask everybody this with the black president, how has that changed for black America? Right, 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 right. Not much. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 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 so therefore, it's like, even if we see, once we see, we see, what the Democrats do is, they come and they pander our votes, but they don't, they don't necessarily, t they don't necessarily let us know the ramifications of, uh, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, political knowledge, or knowing what to do once we have, once we, have, once we've elected somebody, how do we hold them accountable? Like, if I, if I honestly, I feel like I've seen black folks get lazy since we've had a black president. Oh yeah, but like we good. Now man, look, the struggle is like fences. Here's, here's another little side tangent. But, um, I was one of my good mentors, uh, one of my college professors. Um, you know, I was taking his class whenever um, Barack was elected, and he was telling us about the quote unquote father of conserv uh, conservatism. Am I saying that right? Conserv conservatism. Conservatism. I hope I'm saying it right. Anyways, <laughs> I apologize for that. But um, basically, you know, this this is when. The Republican Party was getting super, super duper conservative what happened like back in the sixties. And this was when uh this 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 is when uh, Martin Luther King was alive, you know, you know, really, really spearheading the civil rights movement. And so the father of conserv conservatism, uh, hopefully I'm saying it right anyways, the father of that. Um, he basically was like, well, look, if we these black folks to get quiet and start fighting for their rights, let's make Martin Luther King president. Let's give them a black president so they can feel like they got over and we continue doing what we want to do, because at the end of the day we're still gonna run America. And he was saying, how do we know that that's not what they're doing with Barack? Now, I support Barack. I, you know, it's, it's beautiful seeing a black man and a black woman and beautiful black babies or whatever. But besides that, you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, the people who actually have money are the ones who benefit from whatever the politicians do. If you poll, if you poll broken, struggling, it don't matter if you got a Democrat. It don't matter if you got Jay-Z being uh, president. You dig what I'm saying? If ain't nobody coming to where we are helping us, then... Either way we slice it, we have to help for ourselves. Now, I will say this. Now, so a part of me wants to vote vote green, but not vote it out because I'm kind of jaded to the point where I think I vote don't count. But I will say this. I also know that what these Republicans are trying to do is real. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm damn near scared that if we don't vote, you know what I'm saying, Democrat, that slavery be instated in 2016, that Republicans are in. Like, they are ready to come back through it really ring our necks, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they, no matter what you say, they're pissed off we got a black president. Straight up. They hate that as the figurehead. So therefore, I mean, I encourage everybody to go get a political education. Really, really vote for what's in your best interest or what have you. I know for me, my best interest is my people. So therefore, I'm going to vote for my people regardless. If I go to the ballot or not, I'm going to campaign for my people regardless. But vote for what's in your best interest. But you need to, regardless if you vote or not, you need to know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like... You know, they, they, you know, we gotta read more. We can't just we can't just get our information off of Twitter and Facebook. We gotta go to the libraries. We gotta watch CNN. Like that's what that's what they really tell the truth. Watch CNN, watch C-SPAN, and whatever. That's that's when they really speak unabashedly about what they're trying to accomplish. So we gotta pay attention to that. You know what I'm saying? We gotta read newspapers. We gotta read these articles. Like not just blogs. You know what I'm saying? Not get your home girl tags you on Facebook. But, but, but you know what I'm saying, but go out and get educated in the situation, then you make the vote what's going to be best for you. I'm on the